And welcome back into the Sports Source. This segment brought to you by our friends at Madisonville Marine. Well, they've got any kind of boat you could want. Hurricanes, aqua patios, skeeters, G3s. Whether you want a fishing boat, skiing boat, boat for the whole family like a pontoon boat, Madisonville Marine carries more makes and models than anyone between Georgia and Nashville and probably further than that. There is no better place to buy a boat than Madisonville Marine. All right, take a look here at some of the numbers that came out of that game yesterday uh, in terms of the defense coming through for Tennessee. Uh, and I think, you know, we talked a little last week about how you define defense in this era. And I think that's about as good as it's going to get for Tennessee, especially with, with the limitations they have in their secondary until some new bodies come in next week, or next year, I should say. Uh, rushing game, the rush defense, fantastic, as we'd already mentioned. You see they did give up 300 yards passing, but about 60 of those were on that last prevent defense kind of drive. So it was more like, actually it was 61, so it was more like 240 yards passing for most of the game, which isn't that bad. Total yards, 355, which is respectable in this day and age. Only 13 points. There's your key. Third down defense, especially third and long, that was a question. You got a good pass rush. I'll tell you what, you see the numbers. Let's throw it over to Will Overstreet, Marlon Walls, and Daniel Hood at our nice little bistro table. It's like a little, a little French <laughs> setting. Uh, these guys often gather like this throughout yes, the week. Yes, exactly. Little, little, uh, gentlemen, talk to me about what you noticed from the defense yesterday. Well, I, you know, I think just asking you guys, uh, what was the most impressive part about yesterday for, for you? I think you got to start with, um, for me, it was the pass rush of Byron Young. Seeing him get after the quarterback, I think he ended up with four sacks. I checked the stats on that. But seeing what he was able to do, um, it's going to be huge coming up with this Alabama game this week when you've got, whether you've got Bryce, uh, Bryce Young or you've got the other guy in there that runs the ball all the time, he's going to be your most important player on defense this week. And he's hitting his stride right now, having a great season, looks like an All-American. Um, I agree with you on that, but I'm going to go more with uh, what our defensive backs did. You're talking about two weeks ago, we struggled, uh, and I think everybody saw that. We couldn't stop them third down, guys were running wide open. Uh, here's the reason why I was impressed with them. Yesterday, they made it a point, LSU-wise, yeah. to get the receivers involved with the ball game, uh, uh, Boutte in, in particular. Uh, and so they made it a point, and I mean, those guys could not get, get open. Those guys could not get, uh, get going the way they wanted to. Uh, and I think when you look at it like that, I, I, I think everybody can tell that there's something going on in LSU's offense where the receivers are not connecting with the quarterback. Yeah. They talked about a meeting that was had where the quarterback, you know, brought all the receivers in and said, hey, I've got to do a better job. So keeping that as the focus, I was expecting Butte to probably go and have his best Absolutely. game of the entire season. Uh, but, heck, I think he got a touchdown in garbage minutes. Yep. So for those guys to do better uh, on the back end, uh, knowing when to punch for the ball and when to get the guy on the ground, that was huge for me. That was a, that was a big turning point in our defense. I, I think for me, just personally, the, what's been the biggest thing for this team this year is just how well they've done stopping the run, especially inside the tackles. Yeah. I mean, that's been huge. I mean, because in this game, we all know that against Tennessee, any team w don't, wants to do is how to control the clock and limit the possessions of the UT offense and get a few points ahead, and that's what I'm going to do. But right now to this point, that hasn't been able to happen. You know, we're better at short yardage right now. Fourth and one, yeah. fourth and two is much better than fourth and nine <laughs> or third and nine. So it's, it's been impressive in this that they've been able to do that. Um, I do think, you know, like you were talking about on the pass rush, it was a great day. The only problem is most of that came from that left side. And so I'm always sitting there going with that LSU left side being out, you know, are we going to get the same consistent pass rush against the team with their first string guys in? They've been doing well, and they, you know, they get a lot of their pass rush from the tight end, I mean, excuse me, tight end, uh, the tackle T game. Yep. That's where they've been getting it from. I'd still would like to see them to be able to get off one on one without a game, but, you know, that can happen there. Well, and what you're talking about there, they got to be able to get off. And, you know, you have your run defense, which is your typical they line up in I formation, they run the football. Where Tennessee's going to have a challenge this week is the running quarterback. You know, that is a form of a run offense that Alabama's going to have. And when you look at what LSU did, they had 72 yards at the quarterback position, 70 of which came after after contact. Yeah. And, and I, so you got you got to have someone else other than, than Young to step up. And you I'll tell you this, I'm glad you brought that up. Hey, Beasley led the squad yesterday in tackles, right? So I, that gives me a little bit more confidence against a running quarterback. First of all, we've seen it now twice, 
And on top of that, you, you've got another guy besides Jeremy Banks that's stepping up and having a better season than Jeremy Banks is right now. Yeah. So I like that parity. Uh, John, back to you, man. And Will just learned the difficulty of being a producer while on set. You're trying to give a rap, <laughs> and the other guys just don't rap. <laughs> don't stop. Now you know. Now you know. Hey, uh, this is one reason that I think we talked about this a little last week during our open date show how you're going to have to have a defense when you're paired with one of these speeded up offenses. So I did some numbers this week. Take a look at this. I went back and looked at all of the games from last year and all the games so far this year, not including yesterday. So you're talking 16 to 20 games for everybody out there across the SEC. I added up their snaps. I added up their total time of possession. I divided one into the other to see the fastest offense. And then I wanted to see what kind of defense do they have over that time, over that year and a half. Tennessee's the fastest offense in the league over that time. They snapped the ball once every 20.2 seconds in the last two years. They have the 13th best defense. The other fastest offense, Ole Miss is number two. Their defense, number 11. Arkansas's offense snaps it every 24.8 segments, uh, seconds over the last two years. They're 10th in defense. Meanwhile, other end of the spectrum, the slowest offense is in the SEC. The number four defense, the number seven defense, the number one defense, and Kentucky, which runs a glacial offense. Man, Stoops is conservative. That's the number three defense. So I think when you, as long as you're running this kind of offense, you've got to expect the defense is going to struggle a little bit. Same with Ole Miss, same with Arkansas. That's over a two-year span, so that's not just a five-week deal here uh, so far. But that's why I think that a defense performance like that yesterday wasn't perfect. You want to obviously have a few more playmakers in your secondary. You want to do better on third and long. But that's one where you have to look at it and say, they did what they had to do. And what's the main number? 13 points. So good day for the defense overall, in my opinion. When we come back, the rebuilding job Josh Heupel has done and the magic number, the number Tennessee needs to hit to, Give Alabama fits and the number Alabama doesn't want them to hit. We will show you that next on The Sports Source.